the gamer's Eric Schweitzer sat down with the cast of Resident Evil Death Island. So let's throw it over to Eric. <laughs> <laughs> you can save all this for the interview. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to our table. Yeah, welcome to our table. Do you want to get Um, Matt, uh, Nicole. Yes. You must be Stephanie. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to be here, but I'm really. Oh, glad okay, you are. perfect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so my name's Eric. I'm from an outlet called The Gamer, and I just saw the movie um, just the other day. I loved it. It's super Yay! fun. Yeah. It's really cool to see everybody together for the first time, especially Jill. Thank so, you. Um, <laughs> I have questions for all, all of you and questions for you individually. So I'll sure. start with you, Nicole. Um, you have been in the games, and but this is your first time in the films. Can you talk a little bit about the differences between those experiences? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as far as like from my perspective, I feel like the creative doesn't change as much in some ways because mm. really I'm just looking at where she's at, what she's been through, what's right in front of me, all of those kinds of things. But one of the uh, main differences, and we've kind of talked about this among us because we were sort of like, yeah, what is the difference? Is, is really like when you're working on a game, um, there's a lot more content, there's a lot more time, right. there's a lot more, uh, really just the time that it takes to make the game or to be a part of it or to create. And the fact that the story often when you're shooting a game, a game can change uh, because they're in development and they're changing for the best ultimate game. So you'll change things, reshoot this, redo that. Actually, now it's going to be over here or this monster has changed to this or, or whatever else. Whereas the film, you kind of walk in going, cool, we have less time mm -hmm. to tell a very succinct, often emotional story, mm -hmm. high action, comedy, all of that. And so the script is a little more like, great, this is, it's pretty clear cut what's going to happen. We have the full picture going into it. Um, whereas when you're making a game, sometimes you're like really being flexible and chill and be like, cool, so when does this happen? Okay, here or here. We actually don't know yet, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> so it's just kind of like technical differences, I think, in the way that you view the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, and Matt, it was really awesome to see you back as Leon. It's Happy to come back, yeah. five years. Were you surprised to get another opportunity to play this character? Yeah, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd already kind of uh, kind of made peace and said my goodbyes mm -hmm. to my love of Leon, and Nick has done such a wonderful job of, of picking up the torch and running with it and, and bringing him to life in such an incredible way. It's been just fun to watch him be amazing, and so to kind of have this opportunity to hop in for the film and uh, now share it again alongside him for a moment. It's been yeah. it's been tremendous. It means a lot to me. Cool. Um, and then, Stephanie, you've consistently been playing Claire uh, mm -hmm. through the remake of Resident Evil 2 and then Infinite Darkness and then this movie, too. Can mm -hmm. you talk a little bit about uh, going from game to movie? Yeah, from game to show to movie. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, honestly, I mean, as far as... It goes like it's just been nice to be able to have you know her origin and see how she's like growing throughout all of it. So it's been a lot of fun to be able to do that. Uh, there isn't like a huge amount of like difference as far as like technicality goes per se, minus the fact that you get to have more like nuanced, slower moments, I guess, within like the show and within the film and stuff like that. So I think that's kind of like the bigger differences, but it's amazing and such a blessing to be able to have an opportunity to take a character and continuously grow yeah. an arc through and kind of weave something through it um and i what i really really love too is that her origin right when she has that moment in resident evil 2 with sherry and sherry's like you know why are you helping me mm -hmm. and claire just looks and she's like because i care Right? And it's really cool because then you see that in Infinite Darkness, she's like a part of an NGO. Why else would you help out in an NGO? It's because you care. Yeah. And then we see it follow through in Death Island, which I don't want to give away anything, but there is a particular scene, which as you see in the film, uh, where she's willing to give up everything, even in a circumstance where she doesn't have to, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, what does she do in that situation? Like, what, you know, where are we going with it? And so I think that was really interesting because it's like how far, to what extent is she willing to go um, because of that innate, like, desire to literally do things just because she cares. Mm -hmm. Well, an interesting thing about Claire to me is that I, her, her teammates are such superheroes and she's a more, much more grounded character is that part of your presentation of her do you do you find that to be true 
Yeah, I think it was really, really important to me with any characters I ever take on is to find a human element. Mm -hmm. And so that was really important to me to keep that, you know, that grounded sense and for her to be extremely relatable because she really is of the group because everyone is so fantastic and like literally it's like we're like superheroes without the like superpowers, you know, but with her, it's she didn't get all the training. She didn't get all that stuff. She really was just like a kid off the street who like learned a couple things from her brother, you know. Maybe she shows up with a gun and rides a motorcycle, but that was far as <laughs> you know, like, you know, casual. Yeah, yeah, yeah very casual, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but being able to do that is really cool because that was something that I just thought like, you know what, I'm gonna keep her grounded. I'm gonna keep her true to who she is, you know? And so that was important for me. So even like with a lot of like little quips and little like reactions and stuff like that, I always try to think like, okay, what would you realistically say at this age, right? So if we're talking as a 19 year old or as like, you know, as you're kind of growing and progressing, you know, the cuss words become less and less as she gets older and more, you know, <laughs> assertive with herself. Um, but all of that was really important to me to keep bringing her grounded, keep making her human, keep allowing her to be in that sense. Cause I think that's what I personally connect with. And so I was like, you know what, why not? Why not keep her human and, and keep her um, somebody that you, that you want to see grow and you want to follow and that, you know, really does have the best of intentions and maybe doesn't always, sometimes it falls short, but she always tries no matter what. She's yeah. a great trier no <laughs> matter what. <laughs> um, Matt, let me ask you, I saw an interview a long time ago. It might have been for Damnation, but mm -hmm. you were talking about, uh, you were comparing Leon to uh, Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. in his like energy <laughs> and his quips and I, I'm just curious if your approach to that character has changed over time and what what's sort of like to you what's like the core of Leon the uh, I remember the comparison you're talking about it, a, a lot of his quips uh, to me come from a, a, a place of partial nervous energy there's so mm -hmm. much going on that he has to like release that sort of steam in some way mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, that's where some of it is grounded in um, and then also, as time goes on, uh, the the trauma and the challenges that life continues to thrust upon him, uh, he's put in these positions of saying, is it worth it? Am I still, ha how much more do I have to give up? How much more do I have to sacrifice to see nothing change to, to make it worthwhile? Mm -hmm. And we've seen that in previous films, like that leads to him being a little more of an alcoholic, to him kind of wrestling with these, these internal demons, in which case the quips tend to lean more sarcastic and biting. So I think his journey, that energy changes uh, here and there. Where he is now, I think he's coming to accept that he's not alone. I think a lot of that comes from feeling like he's alone and fighting just as this kind of individual destined to fail mm -hmm. in a world that's putting, that's setting him up to fail continuously. You're the hero, but you're gonna lose. And it's just this over, over, and over, and over again. Now he's kind of realizing he's not alone, that he has a community of people that also have this kind of shared traumatic experiences and maybe there can be success if they're able to lean on each other as opposed to him being on his own. Mm. And so I think that that definitely kind of is the journey he's taken to with Death Island. Um, as far as the, the core of Leon, uh, not unlike uh, what you were saying uh, with Claire, he's, um, he, wants, he wants to help. He's very much this Boy Scout at his heart and has been since the very beginning. Mm. Back in the recent, well, two days, he, the whole reason he joined the police force was wanting to make a difference and to, to, to be a better person, to help other people. Um, so I think that core never goes away. It's just the battle and struggle between that and the cynicism that comes in from these experiences where he feels like, why am I the survivor and this person wasn't? Why, why wasn't I strong enough to be able to make this change and save these people? Yeah. And th that, that struggle, I think, is a, a big core to his character. Mm. And I think that relates a lot to Jill, too. So much of this movie is about her, her redemption arc. And, um, you know, you, you really got to reintroduce Jill in Resident Evil 3. Can you talk a little bit about um, uh, representing that, that redemption arc in this movie? Yeah, I think it's really special because, obviously, I got to kind of jump into her shoes in an iteration really on in her, really early on in her story yeah. you know as in RE3 she already has some PTSD from the sure. mansion and all of her training before um, but she's young she's she's still 
not been through a whole lot more that she's going to go through. So then to get to address her um, almost present day, much, much further on after all of the RE5 and all of the chaos that she's sort of been through was really, really special. I think one of my favorite themes in this movie specifically for everyone is, is how you're coping with trauma from the villain to the hero and to see her trying so hard to, to feel like she needs to do it alone because she's almost not deserving mm. of this team that is so willing to be around her because she carries so much guilt and so much shame over everything that's happened. Um, so watching them continue to be like, uh, you know, like how, how can we support her? How can we get her to like, basically to reintegrate with, um, with her people? Mm. And especially the people that are most likely to be able to relate, understand and support more than anyone else. Um, what she's been through in a lot of ways. So mm -hmm. I think that dynamic specifically in this film is something that I, I really enjoyed because there's a lot of depth amongst crazy action right. and insane monsters and all of the joy and fun that you expect from an awesome Resident Evil film. Yeah, yeah. And and her her sort of redemption arc in the story, it, it, it comes from um, a past that was a Jill that was not you. Yes. Was, was it difficult to sort of internalize that part of her story that you personally weren't part of? I mean, I definitely did my research because I right. wanted to be really clear on everything that she's gone through because so much is referenced. So that just becomes kind of my job as an actor, um, getting to step into a character that's been played since the 90s for so yeah. long. Um, so I don't, you know, I guess not more difficult than in any other research you might mm -hmm. put into things that I would know about myself um, when I'm like stepping into something. So so for me, no, I could I could relate pretty quickly. It's just the, the, the visceral things that she went through as far as being out of control and turning against her own people and her own friends and all of the death that she feels responsible for even when she was in control of herself right. historically she just carries so much shame for all the death that's been around her so to have that actually have her turned into a villain in her mind sure yeah. uh, and in the players minds um is is just so much to contend with so it's cool to watch her come back and where she's channeling that anger and that rage and and that need to connect yeah um, okay, I wanted to ask you all, do you have a favorite character besides the one that you played? Will you go first? I feel like I just want to say Claire because I love Seth. <laughs> <laughs> I just like looked over and Stephanie's eyes were like, I was just looking at you loving I you. That was not like intentional. The, the batted eyelashes and I was oh. like, well, obviously. Oh. It's oh. my other girl. <laughs> <laughs> so many of these characters but legitimately I loved playing RE2 Remake I, mm. I loved watching um, all the characters in that but I also want to like throw a shout out to Marvin and some of these side yes. characters that come in yes. and are really strong like moral moments and then we lose them mm. there's a lot of I think side characters that I actually would be like that's really interesting mm. to me the Kendo the gun shop mm. owner like I love his whole story mm -hmm. so I don't know I get really invested cool. in 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 kind of the small people sometimes too that happen throughout. Yeah. Matt, do you have one? <laughs> uh, growing up with Resident Evil, <laughs> it's hard It's hard for me to not, during the late 90s, early 2000s, you know, Matrix-centric era, to not mm -hmm. pay homage to the ridiculousness of Albert Wesker. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> the, the, the I wear my sunglasses at night bad guy. Yeah. Come on. It's so, it's so <laughs> absurdly delicious, the uh, the archetype that he was. So, like, I... I have a soft spot in my heart for for Wesker, most definitely. Uh, and then playfully, hearkening back there, there's something about Resident Evil 1 Barry. Oh, that Barry, just, yeah. <laughs> there's just something about the like the slightly confused dad wandering through the mansion <laughs> energy that he brought to that game that I, I can't help but still to this day look back on fondly. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, man. Do you pick one, Sammy? Oh, gosh. That's... I'm not batting my eyes at you. <laughs> 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 She's like, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, no, I, you know, I'm not really sure. I, I actually love Marvin's character. Mm. Like, I love Marvin. I never kill Marvin. Like, of all the times I've ever played, I never kill Marvin. He will never die. <laughs> I will not. I will not allow it. Like, I have a rule. Um, <laughs> and I just think that there's like, I just love his character 
so, so, so much. I was going to say it'd be interesting to, you know, kind of see, like, other characters and see what their timelines went to, but I think he's my fave. Like, he's one of my favorites that I think I would have loved to, like, understand more. It's funny because there's not, like, a ton of scenes, mm. but there's enough to, like, realize, like, that Marvin just, like, absolutely cares about you and truly, like does his best to make it all all work out um and then yeah I mean I I like love I have like a like this like love hate with Leon um (laughs) (laughs) it's like Leon Leon like it's like it's like love him you know as like a bro but then you're like why do you have to keep choosing these women that don't really love ya? <laughs> you know, so. relatable for Relat- parts of my life yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i just find it so funny but uh but no i do i do i do love leon though too yeah. like i just you know i think there's just something super fun about leon because leon like takes everything very seriously yeah. everything is serious and that's why i even love because even like the one-liners are serious <laughs> you know <laughs> very genuine like, very yeah. genuine they're yeah. genuine like it's for real you know and so i there's something about just leon that like i just love to love to poke at a little nice. bit too because he's so badass but like it's fun to laugh <laughs> it up <laughs> all right i think that's all my time let me just ask one more quick question i have a hard question for you matt okay can leon be ganondorf Look, <laughs> by himself, probably not. With the crew from this film together, he probably has a shot. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Guys. Thank you so much. No worries. Thanks for coming by, buddy. <laughs>